I find Rolex to be the most comfortable, accurate, and practical luxury mass-produced brand to wear on a day-to-day basis. I say this from personal experience. I don't put value into the image or the advertising or the quote unquote games needed to play to pay. I just straight up like the products. And I think that I would be a fan of this brand. I would want to wear this brand even if it was a small off the beaten path, relatively unknown watch company and not the dominant behemoth that they have become. But that being said, I do think that there are reasons why they lead the market. They wouldn't stay an off-the-beaten-path brand for long with this type of product. Now, I've worn various modern Rolex models for years now, and I enjoy how comfortable they are, how timeless the designs look. I like how accurate they are, how robust they are. If it's a sports piece, I love the bezel action. I like the loom. I like the solid bracelet feel. If it's a more complicated piece, I still admire those things, but I also love the light play and the simplicity of the user operation. So I think that Rolex thinks not only about the visual cohesiveness of their products and their product lines, but I think they think equally of the user experience and that experience prolonged over a potential lifetime of ownership. So I think Rolex, and guys, this is just my opinion, but I think Rolex wants its consumers to wear their pieces and not let them sit unused in a safe. And when that luxury consumer wears this specific product, the brand wants that experience to be consistent and flawless. So again, you may love or you may hate Rolex, but from my owner perspective, No other brand is so consistently easy and enjoyable to use day to day. Now, I'd like to illustrate only one element of the watch in front of the camera today, and I think it exemplifies the incredible attention to detail that Rolex pays to its products. On this discontinued Daytona is the Oyster Flex bracelet. And yes, Rolex refers to this rubber strap as a bracelet. At first glance, it does look like a traditional rubber strap, not dissimilar to what you would find from a third-party brand like Rubber B or Everest, but the execution will be on the next level. This strap is more than the average luxury FKM material. This is a high-density elastomer that is molded around a lightweight, flexible titanium nickel alloy blade, and this will keep the strap's shape over a prolonged amount of time. It really is a smart idea. And under the main sections of the elastomer are twin cushions or twin fins that not only keep the watch proud and consistent on wrist, but it adds a level of comfort with the aeration. And this tells me that Rolex thought, hey, how can we make the experience more practical for those customers who use their sports watches or perhaps live in a hot or humid climate. And I think it's another bright idea that I have not seen other brands implement. And perhaps those brands would be prohibited by patents, but I think the attention to detail really is full on display with the Oyster Flex. So I like how this strap also transitions into the case. In most watches, there would be one of two different things present, a fitted rubber strap, which looks nice, in most instances, or on the other hand, a straight end that creates a visual gap between the strap and the case. And with this watch, with this Oyster Flex bracelet, there will be a mixture of the two ideas at play. So there is a half end length that fills any potential gap in the transition. It adds a little bit of precious metal, but the strap also has a straight end. So there will be full articulation at this flush touch point. So I like that. That looks very nice. And in true Rolex fashion, the spring bar is also crafted out of their own proprietary gold alloy. Now that's another talking point. Rolex only offers the Oyster Flex on gold watches. They offer it on white gold, rose gold, and yellow gold. And I don't know if at some point they will expand its use into stainless steel or titanium or platinum but it wouldn't surprise me if they did at some future point. Right now, this style of bracelet is offered on the Yachtmaster, it's offered on the Daytona, and it's offered on the Skydweller, 
Rolex knows that their customers, they spent around $30,000 or more on these products and will likely not put this system, this bracelet into more affordable sub $10,000 steel products until a good amount of time has passed. I think kind of out of respect to those customers. And I would estimate that to be at least 10 years if they did it at all. The Oyster Flex was introduced in 2015, so currently it's only been on the market for about eight years now, and they are holding up very, very well. I would not be surprised if these straps lasted at least 20 years before they needed to be refurbished or replaced. Now, I do think it would be a nice option to have an Oyster Flex on other material models from Rolex, but it is something to keep an eye on and I wouldn't hold my breath. Now, lastly, let me close by mentioning one other significant element of this bracelet, and that will be the clasp. Rolex could have mailed it in with a basic buckle, but they didn't. They took the well-engineered clasps from their bracelet counterparts, and they fitted it here onto the Oyster Flex. So there will be some added weight to balance out the watch head, but more so, it also it strengthens the cohesive overall look, because I think it's disappointing when a watch has an excellent case, excellent dial, excellent movement, but the bracelet or strap feels subpar or feels like an afterthought, and that's just not the case here. This Oyster Flex feels like it was made especially for this watch head, and it does not feel like an afterthought. And I like that this particular discontinued Daytona has the Easy Link extender that will add five millimeters of travel. The current generation Daytona will have a slightly longer clasp and that has the glide lock system. And that's the first time to my knowledge that the glide lock has been used outside of the Submariner and the Sea Dweller families. So glide lock will add up to 15 millimeters of on the fly adjustability. And I think that's even better than the easy link found in this clasp. But that being said, I enjoy the thought process behind this product, behind the Oyster Flex. I like how Rolex paid attention to the details. And although this is visually similar to other straps, it really is on the next level in terms of engineering and in terms of execution. And I think that this is a solid example of the Rolex way love or hate the brand. So thank you for watching today. Reach out with questions. Please like this video if you found it helpful or enjoyable, and please subscribe to my channel for more horological content. Thank you.